Hello everyone, it's me again Calliope and welcome back to another watercolor tutorial. And you probably already have seen the title and of course the intro so you know what this is about but before we get started let me show you what I will be using. As always my favorite paper which is Artis Cold Press and especially for this painting that we will do a lot of layering we need a good paper that can handle water and layering and it will not start to you know build up and crumble and I cut it in A5 size because I really like working in a smaller size when creating watercolor tutorials. For the watercolor paint I will use this palette by Alt New and I really love this palette. I have used it once more and it has really really vibrant colors and I thought it would be perfect for this sunset. You will see later on in the video that the colors are so creamy and vibrant and really easy to activate. And for brushes, I'm gonna be using my usual two round brushes. The big one is number 12 and the smaller one I think is 0 or 2. I don't remember and the writing has been wiped off. And also I will be using a really large one flat brush for all the smooth flat water placement and of course blending colors. Oh and also I have done some swatches so you can see the colors and yeah look how vibrant they are. I really really love this watercolor palette and the colors are also unique. It has some lime green and really um yeah, I just think it was perfect for the sunset I was going for. Now, before we get started, as you see from the title, I decided to paint a sunset, but not any sunset. If you don't know, I am from Greece, because, you know, my name is super Greek. I am called Calliope, and most of you probably know if you have been here for a while, but yes, I am from Greece, and, you know, right now it is summer in Greece, and everyone wants to be in our islands, the beautiful white houses and you know the blue of the sea and the sunset and one of the top places to see all these is Santorini or how we say it in Greek, Sadorini. So I decided to just search the internet for the perfect sunset Santorini picture that someone has taken. So let's get started. I placed really quickly with my pencil where I would like to have the two islands and the sun. And pretty much that is all the planning I did. As you can see, it is about around half of the page where I place the first mountain and then a little above it on the right part, I have the other one and then the sun is placed to the right. Also, I have some wavy lines to indicate somehow where the clouds will be. Now, I really thought I had some masking fluid so I can mask the places I want to leave white, but guess what? My masking fluid completely dried off and I didn't know about it, so I got some tape and cut out really quickly some shapes to cover the sun part and a few I mean two lines for the clouds because for the sunset sky I was going for there were a few spots that were really glowy and white or kind of yellow and I want to make sure that I will have those blank white spaces to work on later. The very first thing I need to do is of course wet the whole page and I just grab my big flat brush and spread it on the paper and laid a really nice layer of water. Now I'm slowly starting to dig into my colors and placing them on my palette so I can actually see how they're looking. The first ones I'm grabbing are the Tea Party that it is a really nice pink color. Then I'm going for the one called Warm and Cozy to kind of mix them into an orange. Then also I dig into a bit of Red Sunset and yes, many of the names in this palette are sunset names that I just realized and it makes it even more fitting that I used this palette. Then I go also for the one called Fiery Sunset, which is truly the most beautiful fire orange yellow I have ever seen. And generally you will see me mixing all those orange and yellows and red tones on the right part of the palette throughout the whole video. And right now I'm starting to place the first colors on the paper and as you can see I'm starting off light. I grab the uh, light orange color and start to place it in a diagonal kind of way. On the right corner I place a pastel pink. And now, as you can see for the sunset part, I know that the place where the sun will be, I need a really vibrant orange pink kind of shade. So yeah, here I am putting the first really nice orange right beneath the masking tape I have added for the sun. 
I don't think there is an easy way to explain in words what I am doing, so you better just watch me and follow how I blend the colors next to each other. Now, as we go lower to the part of our painting, the purple-blue tones are starting to come up. So here I mixed a purple color to have on the lower part of our sky, meeting the mountains and the sea. Of course, don't forget that this is just the first layer. We will have so much more time to build up the colors and opportunities to fix things, so don't worry about if you have messed some part. Also, I don't know if you can see, but whenever I wanted to mix two colors, sometimes I just wet my brush so I can have a clean brush with clean water on and then I go to blend the two colors together. I do it. I do this all the time, as you can see. Also, I use a piece of tissue paper just to grab some color from the paper to lift it in order to have some spaces more wide because, of course, as I said before, a few places in our sky need to be white and glowy to have all those beautiful transitions between the colors. And of course, with tissue paper, the surface you place on your paper is the surface that will be able to grab the color from it. So in case you need sharp edges and sharp color lifting, you can just fold the tissue paper like I did so you can have sharp edges and you can lift your color very nicely with specific moves and you know just create sharp lifting. Now I'm starting the second layer and I still haven't let my paper completely dry. From the moment I laid the first full layer of water I haven't waited for it to dry, I just kept going and going and placing the colors as you have seen me. And I think this is important to mention since whenever I see watercolor tutorials, I'm always wondering, is your paper dry? Is your paper wet? My paper right now is damp, not really wet, but it is damp. I haven't let it completely dry. And of course, as I keep adding colors and blending them, I keep making it more wet. Again, I'm trying to focus on the sun area because it is really the focal part that leads all the colors and the mixing I need to do. I need to keep my sunset part really vibrant orange and yellow, like glowy looking. And then I continue going up with the color named Warm and Cozy that I am simply dumping it all over the place and I also go a little bit on the left to add there also a few spots of orange. Now as you can see I mixed a purple blue color to add a bit on the left because there are some type of clouds there going on and I needed to add some shading. Moving a bit away from the sky area, I grabbed my big flat brass, wet it and started to build on the horizon, which is of course needs to be kind of misty and blurred out. And it was really nice how easily the colors were lifting and I could just erase any harsh edges I have created. And using the flat brush to create a beautiful line, wetting the whole page again, while also creating soft lines throughout the C part, using the light purple blue color. Here you can see me blending the colors using the flat big brass, and this is a technique I use really often, which is me taking my flat big brass and wetting it a bit, and then going over my colors and just doing a full on wipe, a really soft wipe to blend everything together and create a more blurred look like misty effect and you can slowly see how everything is starting to blur into each other and creating also the horizon with the sea and the sky meeting each other of course this means we need to do a lot more building up because that way we kind of lose the contrast and the vibrancy of our colors but it is worth it for me because this way i can slowly build up my image and where i'm heading now i took my smaller brush to add some details starting to have some shadows on the corner of the page and also more detailed lines on the clouds of the sky again it is so hard to explain blending colors together for a sunset through words but i really hope the image can help you of course you can find the real-time process of this sunset tutorial on my patreon page where you can watch me paint this in real time like you can see every move i make the choices how long it took me to do this or this because yeah for youtube i have to speed up some things but i'm really happy to have my patreons and their support so if you would like to check it out i will have the link in the description box down below I have actually been to Sederini about three times because my mom had a friend there and we went quite 
a lot when I was younger. But it's such a pity because I was really young and it's not like I appreciated everything. <laughs> and it is truly a magical place to be, the way the island grows and the height of it because all the houses are on top of one another. So it's like you're going up the stairs all the time, but it is a really, really interesting place. I really do get why people think it is magical. Here I am again with my sharp tissue, grabbing some color from the sea to create those lines as a reflection of the sunset because i want to make sure i will have kind of a clean space to add the orange reflection and this is the first time i'm using a hair dryer to completely dry it off till now i didn't really let the paper dry completely but right now yes i am completely drying it off in order to see how what i have done till now and see how i can proceed and of course the colors of our sunset is still very light and pastel looking. So I'll basically go over again with my really nice, vibrant, warm and cozy orange, fiery sunset and start building the mix of the colors from the sunset area. So I place the orange right there where we have the paper tape for the sun, then blanket it with a bit of purple Again, here you can clearly see how I'm mixing two colors together. I usually place the first color, then clean my brush, and while it is wet, I come back and try to mix the other color next to it. So I'm spreading them into each other with a clean brush. But before we continue, I would like to say a quick thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. And of course, you probably know by now how much I really appreciate and love Skillshare. It's such a beautiful way to learn new things since it's an online community with thousands of classes where you can actually learn anything you want, like art, photography, and what I have personally been into 3D modeling because, you know, I go to architecture school. So you can actually improve your skills as a hobby, but even more specific for your actual skill level on your work or studies. And it is so great because Skillshare focuses on learning, which means there is no ads when you're watching classes. One of the classes I have been loving is Animation for Illustration, Creating GIFs with Procreate and After Effects by Heather Seidel. And as you know, I got an iPad, so this is perfect. I truly love how she combines illustration with motion and graphics and movement that it just transforms your art into something so powerful. And of course, as with any Skillshare class, you have the class project where you actually create something from everything you've learned and then you can post it and get feedback. So I'm super happy to let you know that the first 1000 people who use the link in my description box will receive one month of free trial to Skillshare Premium. And then you can still continue using it because it is super cheap coming to even less than $10 per month. Moving on, as you can see, I'm starting on a really big part of the painting, which are the black islands that we see. And these are really important because they truly will be the ones that give structure to the whole painting. So now you can actually see where the sea is and where the horizon goes. And for them, I mix a really dark blue purple kind of color. I know it seems like it is black, but it has a kind of tint of blue and purple in it. And while my brush is still a bit wet, I try to blur out the bottom part of the islands because of course we have a shadow there. And even with my big flat brush, that is perfect for clean line shading, like creating the sea was so, so easy using this flat brush because I could create those light strokes of waves that you might see from far away. And it was about time to remove the tape and reveal our white spots and start working on them. And as you can see, the shape of the sun wasn't really a circle and I didn't mind it because I now have the space to work on it and shape it as I please. And of course, when sunset is happening, the sun is not really a circle. It has some blurry lines going through it. And now you're also seeing me placing purple lines for the C part and basically working on the horizon because we need to have a really nice blend of colors from the sea to the sky. And again, using my flat big brush kind of wet to really softly pass it through all my work so I can blur everything out and make them kind of connect. I'm almost not putting any pressure at all. I just, you know, really softly kind of passing it through. <laughs> 
For the next part, I'm using the white gel pen, but of course you can use acrylic white. I just found it so much easier to just grab the pen because it's not like I'm gonna do a lot of work. I started at the sun where I tried to create a more circular shape and fix any spots I thought I had added too much color because of course it is watercolors, you cannot keep your paper extremely white. But it's always nice to just add highlights at the end. And this is what I did, I had highlights on my sky, some lines for the clouds that I also went back with a really vibrant yellow and passed them through because when you have something glowy, really glowy, you know that the center of it is almost white and as it spreads out it gets to a really nice yellow and then we have the actual color. Added a few dots and lines on the mountains and then of course again with my really big flat brush I went ahead and watered down the C part so I can add the final details, the final shadows. Keep in mind that the sea is really far away so it's not like we can see waves but we have those shadows that we can actually kind of indicate from far away. And lastly I went ahead and add those really orange reflections. Again super light tapping with my detailed brush. And our painting is done. <laughs> I really really like how it turned out. I hope I was kind of helpful and guided you through it because it's really really hard to explain it. I thought it would be easier for me to explain what I'm doing but when you have to deal with color mixing it's not that easy to describe it with words. But again I really hope you enjoyed it and you learned something from it and of course please let me know if you try it out. Tag me on Instagram at kaleopiliviaki where I can see everything you create. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and helping me out into my journey of being an artist. Also, as I mentioned, you can find the real-time process of this on my Patreon. And yeah, if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button since it helps so, so much. And of course, it's a free way you can support my work. Let me know in the comments down below what type of watercolor tutorial you would like to see from me next. Uh, and also, of course, I hope I did the Sandorini Ia Sunset justice because I am from Greece. And if, I, if this doesn't look good, then uh, yeah. <laughs> Until next time, have a super duper day. Bye.